Hi, Barbara Friedberg here, former portfolio manager and university investments instructor, here to help you figure out whether M1 Finance or Stash are the better investment apps for you. And I'm going to tell you the decision is not very hard. So we'll go through the features of each of them and then talk about which one might be right for you. So let's dig in. I do have to share that I have an account with M1, but I am totally non-biased because Stash is really a beginner app and I'm not a beginner. So what is M1 Finance? It is an investment platform where you can choose stocks and funds to invest in. You can screen for them and you have over 6,000 choices. You can also elect to choose pre-made portfolios and those are already groups of investments for you. We'll get into what they look like later, but spoiler alert, I have a couple of the pre-made investment portfolios. At M1, they call them pies. Additionally, M1 also offers lending, they offer cash management, and they offer a debit card. So what is the Stash app? Stash app is really for the newest beginner investor. And one of the things I love about Stash is they have a lot of education so that you can actually learn about how to invest before you start spending your money in the financial markets, buying stocks or funds. Stash offers a limited number of stocks and exchange traded funds. And they also offer some pre-made options of already created investment portfolios. They're, like I said, their educational offerings are great. Stash also offers roundups, which is a feature whereby you can use your debit card. They have a, a debit card and you use that. And let's say you spend $1.50. The additional 50 cents is uploaded to your investment account and going into your investing. So let's dig into the features. Then we'll get into who, who each app is best for. Minimum investment of amount. M1 is $100. Stash has no minimum. Literally, if you don't have at least $100, available to invest. You may want to save that up before you even begin investing. Additionally, the fee structure is a point of comparison because you can use M1 Finance for free. You can buy and sell exchange traded funds. You can invest in managed portfolios for free. But if you want more services, you can sign up for the M1 Plus account, which costs $125 a year. And that will give you an extra ability to trade. It'll give you lower interest rates when you borrow money and higher interest rates on the cash in their cash account. Stash has three plans, ranging from $1 to $9 a month. So even with the paid features, I'd say they're both pretty equivalent. You get a good deal for your money. If you want something totally free, an investment platform that charges zero, well, then you'd go with M1 because you do need to pony up at least a dollar a month if you're investing with Stash. Now, here's where we get a, a little bit of a distinction. M1 Finance has 6,000 ETFs and stocks, and they have over 30 pre-made portfolios. Stash has fewer stocks and funds, and they have fewer uh, pre-made portfolios. But if you're just starting out, you really have every, everything that you need at Stash. If you're a little more intermediate, um, you might prefer M1 because they do offer more investment types for you. Again, here's another good dif differentiator, and these are the account types. Obviously, they both have an individual taxable brokerage account. M1 also has a joint brokerage account. They, at M1, you can get retirement accounts, Roth, traditional rollover, and a business SEP IRA. You can also get a trust account and a cash account with a debit card. Are you getting the drift? M1 is a little bit more for intermediate investors who might want more account types. Although, Stash isn't too far behind because they also offer individual taxable brokerage accounts, Roth, traditional, SEP, and rollover IRAs. They don't offer trust accounts, but they do offer custodial accounts for those parents who want to open up a, an investment account for their kids. Customer service is, you know, it's a challenge today for all investment accounts, all, in, all investment apps, except the biggest platforms like your Fidelity and your Schwab's. But both offer, uh, M1 offers phone support. They both offer email and uh, stash. Uh, also has um, an email address on its website and a phone number, but we don't know the hours. Cash management. If you go for M1 Plus, you'll get a high yield cash account with a debit card. They currently pay a rate at M1, which is higher than any other that I have seen for a cash account. At Stash, you get a cash account and you have a debit card as well. And with your debit card, you get uh, stock back as your rewards. Although, unless you're spending a ton of money, you're not going to earn a lot of stock back with that. So where are we? Who benefits? Let's get down to that before we wrap it up. 
Beginners both will like M1 Finance and Stash, although Stash has a much better educational portal than M1 does. But if you're willing to get some basic investment information from other sites, from books, then I would say you'd be comfortable with M1 as well. Both are designed to make e investing easy. And choosing pre-made investment portfolios when you first get started, I think is an awesome way to start because picking individual stocks and funds requires quite a bit of research and study so that you can make a good choice. And because you want a diversified portfolio, that means a lot of eggs in one basket, the pre-made options are good at both, as well as socially responsible investing at both. Now, if you prefer to buy and sell stocks and you're a little bit more of an advanced investor, then I'd say you're probably going to go with M1 because they offer over 6,000 investment choices and they do offer borrowing. And the cool thing about the M1 Finance borrowing is you only need an account value of $5,000 in order to borrow from M1 and you can borrow up to 35% of your account value. Interest rates are super low. You can use the money for anything. You can pay it back on your own terms. While Stash does not offer borrowing, which makes sense. If you're a beginning investor, you shouldn't be borrowing anyhow. I think it's kind of a cool feature. Stash names their investment funds according to um, what they actually are. So they might call the fallback fund is actually a treasury fund with low interest rates. And they call it a fallback fund because there's not a lot of risk there. And it can be used for ready cash. So I think that's kind of a cute feature at Stash. So now let's go to the wrap up and you will find that I like both platforms. I think they're both really, really solid. If you are a brand new investor and you have small amounts of money and you like the roundup feature, I believe the all-in-one app for you would be Stash. Their education is wonderful. Their pre-made portfolios are good. They're really designed for you as a brand new investor. As you get a little more experienced and really on up to advanced investors, M1 takes the cake. I like the fact that M1 has over 6,000 types of investments with the $125 M1 plus per year. You get amazing interest rates on your cash account and also very, very low borrower accounts, uh, very low borrower interest rates. They are both trustworthy. You can make money on both Stash and M1 Finance. And the best app for you is always the app that fits your needs. So you want to figure out what you're looking for in an investment app and then make your cho uh, choice accordingly. You can look over their platforms online and I would suggest you do that and get a sense of the features and what they offer. Stash, you can't really use the app until you have an account because they require sign up in order to log in. But they've got everything you would like to know on their website from investing, banking, cash back, retirement and goal setting. These are the plans. They describe what you get with each plan. And then the M1 Finance app, again, wonderful website. Shows all the features on the website. Invest, borrow, spend, et cetera. Here's what you get if you choose the M1 Plus features. And I'll give you a sneak peek at my investment account at M1. This is my investment portfolio at M1. And within that, I just have chosen two pre-made portfolios, a global dividend and a 60% stock, 40% bond fund. And you can get more information by just clicking on each specific fund, uh, each specific uh, piece of your investment portfolio. These are the funds that are included in this portion of the dividend portfolio. So let's wrap up here. And if you do sign up for M1 with the link below, I may receive a small commission, which will help pay for my channel, but you certainly don't have to. We have more resources below, as well as a link to the article that I was using. And please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like the portfolio. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.